Okay, hello, welcome to another, well actually my first, YouTube Photoshop tutorial. Um, for this tutorial I'll be making a cool space background like you see on the screen right now. Um, for this tutorial I'll be, I will be using Adobe Photoshop CS4 Extended Edition. CS5 will not work if it is running in 64-bit mode, because um, I do need lighting effects to work on your machine if you intend to do this tutorial. Um, if you do have it running in 64-bit mode, like it is by default if you install on a 64-bit machine, which is pretty much every modern Mac, well, every modern Mac, depending on how you define modern, you are going to go to Applications, then to your Photoshop folder, and this is CS4, remember, so I don't have this option. But you're going to right-click, go on Get Info, and then it'll have something like, such as Open in 32-bit mode. You're going to want to check that. Or if it's open in 64-bit mode, you're going to want to uncheck that. I'm pretty sure it's 32-bit mode, though. That's just one of the many reasons I haven't upgraded to Photoshop CS5. It's pretty expensive, and there's not all that many wonderful upgrades, and the content-aware filter isn't really that great. And so, anyway, to make this, we're just going to open up Photoshop here. We are going to um, make a new document. I'm just going to choose 2000 by... All caps, might as well. 2000 by 2000. And resolution 72 is fine. It's not like we're printing this out or anything. By the way, this makes a nice website backdrop, a nice backdrop for green screens, um, anything really like that. So uh, what we're going to want now is we're going to want to uh, fill the background with black. Oops. I'm going to want to fill the background with black. And then you're going to want to make a new layer and draw the stars. Um, if you're in a particular crunch for time, you can um, use the filter noise add noise effect. You probably will have to fill that layer with a color first before you can add noise. Um, by the way, make sure monochromatic um, is selected and make sure the distribution is Gaussian if you're trying to make stars. Uh, and that's still, it doesn't look all that nice. It looks not quite so random. Um, you can see kind of recurring patterns in it. Uh, so I prefer to do it the long method here. Um, it's a, uh, what I think makes, whatever makes the better end product is what you do, no matter how long it takes. Um, but if you're just trying to whip this up real quick for a YouTube video, it's not going to be very big, or it's just going to be a small little thumbnail for your Facebook profile or whatever. That is, if you're weird enough to put this on as your Facebook profile. But, um... Anything like that, it you know you can just do filter noise, add noise. But if you're trying to make a professional website, one this tutorial probably isn't for you because it doesn't look that great when you're done. Although it does look, I guess, pretty good. It's not one of the extremely professional uh, space scenes that involve tons more steps. Uh, it is instead um, just a simple one for playing around for hobbies and stuff. And you know it it gives you nice end product, but it's not amazing or anything. So anyway, I made some stars there. I'm just going to copy them. I'm going to paste them over, kind of drag them into place. Paste. And really, you can't see a pattern with these, especially if you overlay them differently. Um, sometimes you can see a bit of a pattern. It's not really a problem. The viewer's not going to be looking for a pattern in the background. And it's probably going to be um, set back into the background anyway. So maybe you change the opacity. Maybe change the alignment of these a little bit. Yeah, move that a little there. And, you know, whatever. You can play around with it. Uh, we're just going to merge these layers down. That's Command-E on the Mac. You can also go uh, Layer, Merge Down. Merge Visible um, or Flatten Image will combine it with the black, which we do not at this point want. We're going to copy all those again. We're going to paste it again. Gonna move it a little bit. And then we're going to expand it to make it a little bigger, to make some slightly bigger stars. Then we're going to copy those and paste them on our new layer. And make some bigger stars than those we just made. And copy those, paste those. Going to make an even bigger layer, I mean, even bigger stars on a new layer. You see where this is going. Um, you can play around with the stars with the opacity of the layers. Um, all that is an open playing field. And in fact, for this, I'm going to want to change my very background stars to 
my bigger stars to like 70-ish, maybe 60 here. And then I'm just going to merge all these layers together. And I'm going to go Filter, Blur, Radial Blur. And I'm just going to apply, you want it to be Zoom by the way, not Spin. Just a small little Radial Blur. This might be a little off. It seems to be trial and error every time. But, um, yeah, 5 worked pretty good. You can, you know, move it around a little. That looks good. Maybe do that one more time. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So, yeah, that, like that looks pretty good. Um, then it just gives you the illusion of traveling. And at this point, if you want to change the opacity in 90 or something, that might look nice. Um, so we're going to start adding planets now. So you can create a new layer. But really what we're going to need is to do is create a new document. I'd suggest 3000 by 3000. And by the way, what I'm going to use here, I did not come up with. Everything else in this tutorial I came up with myself. Um, this I actually saw on another website and thought it was really cool. Uh, the link to that website for this rock texture uh, will be in the description. Although me making it into a planet and rotating it and doing all the lighting effects, those are my idea. But the tutorial that I have linked in the description is how to make this really awesome rock texture. And sometimes it works better than other times. But uh, what you want to do is you want to choose kind of like, at least for starters, kind of a nice, even, slightly dark brown, like that. And then a lower two-thirds gray, which means anything from, that's like one-third, that's the second third, anything from about 6968668 down. Actually, that would be 6969669 down. Or 6868668 down. But anyway, anywhere from there down... Um, but you want it a little above, you want about like that, 4E, 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 that's a good hex value for that. You're going to go Filter, Render, Clouds. And we don't really want, you see how small those little cloud areas are? We, um, we want it to be a little bigger, so we're just going to select all, copy, new layer, paste, we're going to delete this background layer. Uh, Command-T for transform to make this bigger. Um, that should probably work. What we're going to do is this layer, it has all this stuff around the edges that we don't need and we're never going to want. So I'm just going to copy the contents of this little square right here, make a new layer, paste, and delete our old layer because the old layer is taking up unnecessary RAM. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Channels. I'm going to make a new alpha channel. I'm going to go Filter, Render, Difference, Clouds. Do that a couple times. This one you also want to transform to make it bigger. Maybe like that. You know, you don't have to go too crazy. We're going to go back to this layer. We're going to go Filter, Render, Lighting Effects. And you can adjust these numbers how you want. Um, I always like to put the light... Well, I guess we can keep it there. There we go. I always like to put the light kind of up here. I don't know why. But, um, but the important part is putting your texture channel as Alpha 1. Um, you can play around with whether white's high or not. I'm going to leave it as white is high and put it as very mountainous. Um, you can change these numbers here. I might change a little plastic. A little shinier, maybe. You can also do that. I always use the spotlight just because I know what I'm... I usually do it with the spotlight and it seems to work fine. So um, we're just going to press OK here. It's going to make kind of a cool rock texture here. Um, sometimes you get a really cool one. Oh, this one's really nice. Perfect. And depending on what colors you do, you can get some really cool effects like sandstone and all that. And so you're going to make sure you have no feather up here. You're going to select a good sized square that's not in the really bright area or the really dark area. You're just going to copy it, make a new document, Command N. Leave the width and height the way they are, because if you copy properly, it'll be the exact size of this. Paste it in. Then go 3D, and this is um, the part where we're making the planets. New shape from layer, sphere. And it's going to generate a pretty nice sphere. You can use the 3D rotation tool to rotate it to your liking. I think that's good. I'm just going to... There's no way to directly rasterize the 3D layer, so you have to convert it to a smart object, and then you have to go in and rasterize it, which is kind of annoying. Um... 
So anyway, here's our planet. We're going to, I'm just going to copy it and paste it into our space tutorial. I'm going to put it over here, maybe resize that. It's a little big. There we go. Uh, we're going to add a outer glow to it. So you're going to double click on the layer, go to outer glow, going to choose, I generally think for the bigger planets, a nice light blue 40 EFF5 looks kind of nice right now. You can play around with that. Um, and size usually around 49 to 50. Although up to, you know, 80 will still work. It might just look a little big. I'm going to do 54. No, 56, 7. 57, that's pretty nice. Um, it all depends, obviously, if you have a document two times as big, you're not going to want to use... If you're going to use 57 on this size, you're going to want to use, you know, 114 on that size. Because um, it's it's not proportional to the size of the document. It's not like, you know, 10%, 5%, 2%. It's just an amount of pixels. So the bigger your document is, the higher that size is going to have to be. But for a 2000 by 2000 image, 57, anywhere from 45 to 80, 90 ish seems to work good. Uh, 90 is a little on the high end. Um, you don't really want to mess with your contour. You can play around with it a little, uh, get some cool effects, but I generally just like to keep it on the normal. Um, maybe add a little bit of noise here. Not that much. Maybe like that. Maybe. So we're just going to press OK. There's our planet now. Um, you can see the atmosphere over here, and it blends in nicely because you can kind of see the stars through it, so it doesn't look like just a plain weird blue ring there. Uh, so what you're going to want to do now is, uh, also if you want to make rings, there's a really cool way to make rings. Uh, it's Let's see, make a new document, 2000, 2000. The size of this one doesn't really matter as long as it's big enough and not too big where it eats up too much memory and processing power and whatever on your computer. Uh, you're going to make a new document. You're just going to um, put in, you know, filter under clouds. And then you're going to do like, let's see, I think it's twirl. Uh, let's see, twirl. Here we go, distort twirl. I knew that. Um, and you're just going to add a really high twirl like that. And um, then you're going to select with your elliptical marquee tool with a feather. I would suggest using a feather of 50 pixels for a size 2000 by 2000. You're going to uh, select kind of a mid-range, mid-area here. Invert your selection and delete. It gives you kind of a cool black hole kind of look. Um, especially if it was on more of a space background. And in fact, I should have really um, not made this a background layer. And so, layer from background... I'm just going to put it above here. That way, if in this layer, you can put wherever you want it to be over just to see how it looks. But I'm going to redo that kind of nice selection like that. Invert, delete. So there you go with your transparency behind it. Um, and you're going to want to go image. Or well, first, you're going to want to select the middle part of it. I actually like to do this on a new layer so I can kind of move my selection around once I make it and even um, you know move it move it around like this like say there's good invert delete oops not invert delete just delete and then you have this kind of nice ring pattern you're gonna go to image uh, I mean edit transform uh, perspective then you can change your perspective here so the rings are kind of like that. Then you can command T to transform to make more like that. Um, you can do like a color overlay at this point. Multiply. Uh, good color is usually like a kind of orangish, deep orange, nearing on the borderline of brown. Kind of like that looks cool. And you're just going to select that. You're going to put it... Oh, right. I have to rasterize this layer. So I'm going to... Oops. I'm going to convert to smart object, then I'm going to rasterize so that it takes its color overlay with it. I'm going to go here, I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to put it right in front of my planet, and then I'm going to go in and fine tune uh, this area right here. So I'm going to 
select this area. And I'll just get that chunk out of the way. I'm going to move it a little. And see, it looks like it goes behind it. I'm going to come over here. I saw part of this on another tutorial, too. Um, that's what caught my eye. That's what gave me this idea. I can't remember the link, and it really wasn't this exact way. It was kind of similar, but it got me thinking about how to make rings. Um, so something kind of like that. It doesn't have to be too... See, I mean, I missed a couple of pixels, but it's still not all that noticeable. And you can even, you know, screen it back, maybe an opacity of 70, maybe even 60, like that. That adds some kind of character to the planet. You can also add multiple of those at different angles, and that looks really cool. Uh, so if you want now, you can add some moons to this. You can just make those the same way as you made your other planets, uh, with a rock texture kind of thing like that. I'm just going to use the same rock texture, but I'm going to change the uh, brightness and contrast. And I'm going to change the hue. Make it kind of like... That looks cool. Then we're going to select part of it. New document, enter, command V. 3D, new shape from layer, sphere. You know the drill. Convert to smart object. Rasterize layer. Command A, command C, command D to deselect. Then I'm going to paste it in. Uh, it's a moon, so it's not going to have an atmosphere here. Some moons can have atmospheres. I'm not saying moons can have atmospheres, but this one's not going to have one. Um, so you can add more planets if you want. Um, just to save time on this video, I'm going to not add any more planets. But if you want to add another planet here or a planet there or whatever, they look pretty cool when you do them in the corner. Like, I'll just show you real quick, actually, because I feel like it. Gonna rotate it around like that. That looks good. We're gonna convert to smart object. We're going to rasterize the layer. Command A, Command C, and come on. Oh, Command A, Command C, Command D to deselect. Command V. So we're gonna paste it into our new document. We're just gonna put it in the corner here and adjust the size just a little bit. So like that, we can add an atmosphere to that one. That looks good. And uh, so now we're going to do the um, lens flare in the background. So what we want to do is actually, um, you want to be on your original background layer, so don't combine your stars into it yet. That would really mess you up. So you decide wherever you want your uh, flare to be. It usually looks really cool if it's coming right over a planet, like right around there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the background layer, and I'm going to put a little um, paint dot there, white paint dot, so that when I'm doing my lens flare, I can see it. And uh, that will not show through the lens flare. The lens flare will way overpower that, so it doesn't matter. So you're going to go filter, render, lens flare. See that white dot right there? That's where we're going to put it. Enter. And see, now we have a nice little lens flare. It looks like the sun, kind of. Um, so now we're going to want to change. You see, if we had the sun there, this part of the planet wouldn't be that dark. This part of the planet wouldn't be... I mean, that part of the planet wouldn't be that light. That part of the planet wouldn't be that dark. So um, we're going to want to modify that. So let's just go in. Um, using your lasso tool, I recommend a feather of, like, you know, 50 pixels for this size of an image. You're going to want to select Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast, 150, Enter. And you're going to want to just keep doing that, making bigger circles each time for about, you know, five or six times, depending on how big your circles are and how dark your texture was to start with. By the way, you can also make 3D objects out of oops, all kinds of uh, other textures. Um, pretty much any image you load into Photoshop, so you can play around making some pretty cool planets with, uh, or just 3D objects with other nice textures. And by the way, since we didn't combine it all into one layer, or it is in one layer, but since we didn't like rasterize it, 
my selections do not affect my outer glow or any other effects like that, which is nice. So that looks good. That's nice and bright and whatever. Maybe this area could use a little more care. There we go. And now this part would be dark. So we're going to select it. Image adjustments, brightness contrast, negative 150. Because that would be dark. And, you know, you can play around with the shading. It takes a while to get a hold of at first. So, you know, play around with it. And that looks pretty good. Now we're going to move on to our moon and do the same thing. By the way, some planets look really cool with like five moons, three moons, four moons. So we're just going to want to select this part over. Okay, so this is um, a smaller place to deal with, so we need to put a smaller feather or else you won't get anything selected. 150, enter... And for moons, you don't have to go as crazy because they're smaller, and, um, yeah. By the way, if you feel like doing double the work for each one of these planets, you could rotate it a little bit um, on the second time, and then you can make a stereoscopic 3D image. Um, that would require, the way those work is you, it's like two images side by side, and you cross your eyes till they meet in the center, and then they look 3D if you do it right, and so for each one of these, once you rasterize the planet, um, once you rasterize the planet, you would undo that rasterization, make it a 3D object again, and you rotate it a little more, re-rasterize, make it a 3D object, and then do all your stuff again to it. Uh, that's a lot of work, I'm not going to do it on this video, but it does work pretty cool once you put all the time into it. Uh, now we got to do this um, plant down here, the one down in the corner. So I'm going to change my feather back to 50. And we are going to start. So for this one, since it's kind of far away, you have a little more lee room with your lighting. You still want to make it pretty believable, but since it's not as close, it's harder for the human eye or the human brain or whatever to track its way over to where exactly the light should be. So... You don't have to be quite as precise in this area right here. You know, just something like that would look nice. Maybe darken this little area back here. And I'm going to lower my feather to 20. I'm going to make a selection back here. I'm just going to lower the brightness on that just a little bit. So, you know, like that. Some nice shading. Uh, next, what you can do is you can add, like, some... Uh, make a new layer here. Make sure it's on top. It is. You can get a nice kind of bluish color. Light blue. Here we go. And the black. Or actually, you know what, let's try a nice kind of mid green and you go filter render clouds and you're probably going to want to stretch those to be bigger we're going to do the same ram saving thing we did earlier so copy that layer onto new layer just the visible area of that layer onto new layer then you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go in with a big eraser tool very big um, and you're going to want to erase most of it like that, just leaving a little bit of hue, a little bit of color around. And then you're going to want to lower the opacity, maybe like there. That looks pretty good. And then you're going to want to um, make a new layer and do the same thing, but with different colors for your clouds. Let's choose kind of a pink-purple thing, and we'll leave the green. So, but we'll make the green a little darker, just a little. So we'll go filter, render, clouds again. We're going to do our little expanded RAM save thing here. By the way, if you need any help with this tutorial, feel free to comment below, and I'll try to help you. I want to erase most of that.
So kind of like that, you know, give you some color around the edges. You can obviously add more plants and it'll look cooler. Uh, I just don't want to tie up all your time with that. You can do some other cool effects. You can change the amount that these stars were blurred to make it look like you're traveling faster. You can even give a slight, 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 slight um, radio blur to a planet, although that's going to make it look a little weird. But if you want to show, if you want to make like your make it look like you're traveling through space, you know, it gives an interesting effect. I personally want it to have more detail like that. You can add all kinds of other stuff here, but um, that pretty much concludes my tutorial. Be sure to save often while you're doing your work. I didn't this time, but be sure to. Uh, this Photoshop document will be uploaded to Mediafire. The link is in the description below, as well as a link to the final image as a JPEG, in case you wanted to download that for whatever reason. And um, thank you, and subscribe if you want. And if you have any questions, as I said before, feel free to comment below. Thank you.